Hi, I'm Kate. Welcome to the Google for Education stand here at VET. We've been here a few years now. Uh, and I think in this uh, vlog you're going to see some of what we are bringing to the world of education. So uh, uh, this, this is the, one of the premium education tech conferences, right? Yeah. There's all kinds of uh, education related so stuff. Um, so it's a, it's a what are you showing over here? So we have a lot of uh, computer science partners here. We have an, a, a great app called uh, Science Journal, which takes all the technology in a smartphone to help read things like wind speed and pressure. Uh, we've got some of our uh, program partners over here. We've got some 3D printing. Basically, this whole area is to show teachers of science and maths how you can use technology in the classroom. And uh, there's a lot of Chromebooks at the booth, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Hey, yeah, so we're showing off some of the latest Chromebooks that have just been launched. We've got some cool... They actually launched them at this show. Uh, I think yeah. so. I a couple of them have been launched at the show, yeah. Launched at this show, yeah. yeah. Um, so they've got some cool new features, things like we've got this one from Lenovo that includes a garage stylus that just nice. clicks into the side. This is a 500E. Which is a 500E, yeah. And, um, uh, this so one uh, folds and everything. And touch yeah, so and this one's convertible, 360, so it can be used as a tablet as well. You've got a world-facing camera. On this device as is well. That, is so that for augmented reality apps? That one is that possible to use that or I'm not uh, I'm there not are, sure. maybe I'm not sure. But yeah. it's a back facing camera. Yeah, it's a rear facing camera. Mode, right? When it's in tablet mode, the students are able to video uh, like they would with, with a normal consumer tablet, but in a much more robust device. So they've got things like rubberized edges that mean that they can be put a bit more through their paces, more designed for children of all ages. And there's also a new Dell Chromebook right here. What does this camera do down here? It's, yeah. So that's the same thing. That's another world-facing camera. It's called the, world facing. World-facing. World-facing camera. Cool about all the Chromebooks, they have all great keyboards, great mouse. It's a requirement, right? Yeah, it's really good. And actually, you'll also notice on uh, Chromebooks, it's all lowercase lettering, which is fantastic for students who are learning to write correctly. So primary school students as well. So what kind of lettering did you say? Uh, lowercase lettering. Lowercase. Yeah, which, which sometimes some keyboards with any uppercase lettering, it's not as conducive to learning how to how to write as easily as it is. And most consumer devices will have a capital letters keyboard. And what's the consideration in the mouse pad? There's always a big, large one with a multi-touch. So that, that's like the requirements also. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so so let's walk around. The yeah, for sure. Do you want to? Okay, cool. Yeah. What, what, do you, what else do you want to see? Uh, let's walk around and see some of the demos you have over there. Okay, so sure. I... A whole bunch of Chromebooks more and showing off some different things with Chromebooks. Yeah, let me, I'll just show you uh, what, one of the features we're showcasing here at VET are Chromebooks that are compatible with the stylus device, so a touchscreen device. What we've done is made these quite affordable for schools in that the technology that works with the stylus device is actually all in the, a Chromebook. So if a kid loses a pen, it's not something that's super expensive that you've lost. They can even use, uh, I saw on some of them, they can use pencils. Yep, that's probably. Like, uh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, is, uh, this is the Pixel book. Yeah, uh, that's the new Pixel book. It's, it's available worldwide. Uh, not worldwide yet. Not um, worldwide I, don't, yet. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah. But as, especially in the, in the US, there's a lot of this. So yeah, it's available in the US. I was, can I also take you yeah. over here? The other thing, um, this is really important with the upcoming uh, general data protection regulation that's coming out of May. Uh, we're announcing about some new security features such as DPA and uh, hosted uh, Gmail SMIME that help make schools pull a few levers to help them in their road to being compliant um, as a data controller so, in, GDP, in GDPR. Some new rules in the EU? Yep, there's a new, yeah. a new worldwide, uh, a new, sorry, a new EU-wide um, Security. piece of legislation that's coming out yet yeah, yeah. called the GDPR or the General Data Protection Regulation. Yeah. Um, and uh, Google as a data processor is compliant with GDPR and uh, schools need to be compliant as data controllers. And that's uh, just so going to be part of the uh, Chrome OS update, all these yeah, functionality. Yeah, G Suite, uh, Chrome, Chrome OS as, a, as a, an operating system is GDPR compliant. So we're just launching some new tools for free that will help schools manage some of their data in their, in their road to becoming GDPR nice. defined. So let's walk around some more. Looking around here, this is a, I did a video about this one. It's a new one with a, it works with a pencil. Yeah. Um, let's, let's walk around. So during the week, you've been having a, I kind of classes here. What are we talking about? Yeah, so we have two uh, two fabulous ex-teachers who are now turned uh, demonstration experts. Dean, do you want to come on camera, actually? 
Hey. Do, you to, do you want to explain a little bit about what you're doing here, Dave? Yeah, we're running a uh, hands-on... Do you want me to speak to the camera or to Kate? Ah, to, to you. So we're running a hands-on demonstration of G Suite and Chromebooks. Um, and so we're looking at things like using Google Classroom, collaborating in Docs, doing self-marking quizzes in Google Forms, uh, and even a bit of exploring spreadsheets, which is kind of my favorite kind of flourish at the end of the demo. So uh, is it exciting for, in general, for teachers to start working with uh, this kind of collaboration features and stuff like that? Yeah, I think and if, it's you, all, uh, if you've been here through the days and seen some of the reactions from the teachers when they see the Explore tool in Sheets, for example, they certainly look excited anyway. So in real time, they can see what every student is doing, kind of? Absolutely. Up they to can jump in people. and help? Yeah, so you can have up to 100 people collaborating in real time on one uh, document. Same in spreadsheets and slides as well. Uh, so things like collaborative notes in the classroom, that's perfect. Is how about stylus input notes? Are they also collaborative? Absolutely. In, so, in what in what app? D yeah, depending on the app that you're using. So uh, Google has a classroom Android app, for example, where students could open up their document and use the stylus to then ink over the work that they've done. They can uh, highlight the text features. or yeah, exactly, yeah. they can scribble around the text? Anything like that, yeah. And uh, that's that's just instantly collaborative. Instantly, the teacher can scribble on the document of the t the kid. Right now, the the uh, writing with a stylus isn't collaborative. Just when we're working on a document and typing together, um, something like Explain Everything, which is a, an Android app that runs on Chromebooks, allows you to collaborate in a whiteboard space like that. So you could import uh, pictures or some of your work, for example, and then they could collaborate. And so, how much uh, educational content is there out there? That's perfect on Chromebooks. Okay, is it possible to get all the... Like you asked that before. We don't have a number. There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't have a number. We, that... But there's more and more uh, of the kind of like curriculums that need to be digitized kind of, right? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, as you probably know, the Classroom API is completely open source. I mean, people can build things that work with Chrome. Uh, yeah, I mean... And some of them are the Android apps that run on Chrome, and the other are just web-based, right? Exactly. So there's a really nice mix now. Having the Google Play Store and being able to run Android apps essentially opens up a world of possibilities that weren't available before. And then obviously you've still got the power of the web and things like Soundtrap and, and Flat. Uh, for music teachers, for example. So Soundtrap is a great example of collaborating on music. So we could have someone recording their voice and singing on my track here, and someone in Australia recording on their guitar, and we're doing that together in a, in a, with a, making a piece of music. One thing that I'm wondering, I don't know if it's, maybe you probably can't answer, is that it would be cool if there was a statistic. If you use Chromebooks in the class, how much better do the, do the kids uh, perform? Yeah, but that's so subjective. I mean, yeah, okay. we'd love to be able to say something like that. I mean, there's definitely been... They get 20% smarter, maybe. Okay, I'm definitely just joking. got some great case yeah. studies of the way teachers have used technology to really change the way they teach, the way students work together, or the way they learn. That has seen like uh, measured improvements in learning. Um, obviously, that's a case by case basis, but it's really exciting to see when that happens. I mean, that's, a lot that's of the things goal. are happening in this space, right? Yeah. It's a very busy area. And uh, you, you, you working with Europe mostly or yeah, so UK? I, I myself work in Europe. Um, looking, yeah. So because uh, the, the Chromebook market has been quite large in the education in the US, but yeah. now it's growing in Europe too? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so Chromebooks are number one in the US, but they're also now number one in Sweden, uh, in Canada and in New Zealand. They're used worldwide by a few million people. So like, people. I think was it was it more than million? 25 million students. 20 million students worldwide. Yeah. 20 million students worldwide, but 80 million users of G Suite for Education, which is the software we have available in nice. the classroom. Nice. Right, so let's walk a little bit more yeah, around. Sure. Cool. So around here is uh, what is the professional development about? Uh, so Google for Education has a lot of free online resources for teachers to help them use our tools, and it's taught in a really organic, uh, intuitive way, so that it's not sort of just knowing knowing the features of the tools, but how you might use them if you were a teacher for a specific task. And what Jean and Ollie are showing as well is very much like if you're a teacher, here's here's a task you have to do every day, and here's how our tools can help make that easier or help you get there. Nice. And over here, uh, is just people using the stylus or yep. doing some uh, kind of like uh, yeah. stylus stuff around here? This, this is the Jamboard as well, so this is something new at BET. Yeah. Uh, the Jamboard is a, is a new piece of... Um, uh, yeah, yeah. It's like an uh, uh, interactive whiteboard software. Yeah, it's an interactive whiteboard that can uh, really facilitate collaboration. I might leave you in the hands of Ashley to do a better job when that when that comes. Right now, maybe we'll jump right back. Yeah, yeah. Let's just jump right back. Okay. What's going on here? Is is gaming for education? Is that possible to have like fun education games? Yeah, it definitely is. So this this what you're seeing here is a is a game called Breakout EDU. Yeah. Uh, right here is uh, there's a lock and when yeah, it gets... and, the, and the whole idea of this game is it's kind of like the escape room concept, 
and it's a series of steps you have to perform using G3 and, and as you as you uh, solve those steps, you see all these various locks that you can unlock, and at the very end, you win a little prize of candy. This is our newly launched. Um, oh, sorry. Um, be Internet Legends is our new online, uh, a new resource to help students, carers, and teachers learn about digital citizenship, staying safe online, uh, and uh, there's some fantastic resources that we're launching. All right, so you, like uh, educational uh, content for that. Yeah, let me get someone who maybe yeah? is good to speak. Let's try. So, uh, so what are you doing with the uh, uh, Be Internet Legends? We are teaching young people between the ages of seven and eleven how to stay safe online and have fun. So, uh, they have to consider not to share the information. Yeah, so we covered five pillars of internet safety: everything from thinking before they share, making sure they have strong passwords, but also the really important stuff around being kind and reporting when things go wrong. Being kind to each other, help each other, something like that? Yeah, being kind to each other, helping out when they see other people getting into difficulties, not being to nice bully. internet citizens, not to bully. Yeah, it's not, really, it's really not important nice one. When, people, when the kids are bullying. Really important yeah. one, not bullying each other, not getting involved in other people's arguments, just being nice digital citizens. Are there citizens. any tools to connect the, the, the parents, get them involved? The big thing about this program is that the children love it, they get really excited about it, and at the end of it they're an internet legend. So they go home and they talk to their parents. So right here is, uh, is there some information about all the different things right here, right? Yep, so there are lesson plans, there are activities, there's an online game that goes with it, there's everything you need to know to help children become internet legends in the, in the booklet. Nice. Cool, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Fantastic. Nice. Uh, do you want to see... Yeah, let's jump over here. And then yeah, so Google Expeditions was launched a couple of years ago, and I think two million children now have taken an expedition. Two things really? we're launching here at BET. Uh, one big, big piece of feedback that we had from a lot of teachers is that they just want to create their own expedition and map it to the content or the curriculum that they're teaching. Whoa. So, so does that go let me over here? Uh, oh, okay. Does that go... Um, into the Google Earth as long kind as of? You can, yeah, it's going on the water right now. Yeah. The kids can go on the water. Even. Yeah, they can go underwater. And so the two, th the two things that are launching at BET are um, tour builders, so teachers can now build their own expedition, and expeditions AR or augmented reality, which you'll see here. There'll be some customers demonstrating. Yeah. Um, the How do you know you guys sell But it's, it's like a school, right, okay, so it's not uh, in so rooms, like the real one. So, so they can see how it was yeah, back then. Yeah. And can you go inside and see the fighting happening? You can do it next week. Whereas, um, if you want to, uh, uh, I guess. With the lions and everything? Yeah. All right. So is there a lot of content for this? Uh, yeah, it's growing. I, 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 a lot is a... Is a, a but yes, there's, there's definitely content and it's growing. Because I think it's great if the kids can feel like it's a roller coaster ride to go to school, and exactly. they can be like excited. I'm with and be you like, on that. I want to go to Rome. Exactly. Yeah. Well, so what this really helps is like, I mean, to, to go to Rome is, is a big thing, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid. Yeah. 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 Expedition just allows to, you know, you can go anywhere in the world, but off a phone. Is there anything interactive about it where they have to answer questions? Uh, yeah. So um, expeditions is built for a teacher to be able to <laughs> talk through it in the classroom. We have questions, we have prompts, um, there's that also now to a builder so teachers can build their own and I believe students can too, they will double check that. Yeah. Um, cool. Uh, and then uh, there's a Jamboard, let's try, let's try to jump uh, in through here. Uh, We're checking out the Jamboard. So I can then load it in there uh, and I can you know, essentially so bring in content from my dog. Is that a, a web-based app or is it a... Wait until she, because she'll do a really good job. Nice. Pull those out. Okay. I can annotate on top of those. Okay. So let's fix this. So I can say, go ahead, you know, let's go ahead and fix this. And if I'm in from my app, I can say, okay, no problem. 
I'll revive. So the synchronized. Yes. Synchronized. Uh, yep. So everything's happening live, real time collaboration. So you can go ahead and take this. And if I want to go ahead and edit, I can double tap. And I can say, great, but let's make sure that um, that Tina's ideas are in pink and Ashley's ideas will be in yellow. So we can kind of, you know what I mean? So we can take this, drag it, so if it over. Work, exactly. Yeah. So Does this yeah. only work on the Jamboard or it works with any interactive whiteboard? So the, the software is proprietary to the hardware, so it is going to be baked into this device here um, specifically. So it's not like just a web-based or an Android app or something? It is an app, so you do have an app that is separately available um, and it's going to be downloadable for Android or iOS. Um, you can also download it on your Chromebook as long as Chromebook uh, has the Play Store compatibility. But this hardware has more of the whiteboard features. This is like a... Yeah, this is more of a scaled down version from your app. So if you're using it from mobile, you have uh, about three features. But if you're using it from your tablet app, then you have all the exact same features that you do here on the board. All the exact same. Exact same, except you get one plus extra from your tablet. You're going to have that drive access. So you'll be able to download, you know, to load in your docs, your sheets, your slides. So you can just have a very good, a very big uh, tablet, like a uh, any interactive tablet and just load it? Um, not necessarily. You mean as far as like having a different screen display or? Having the same functionality. Not, it wouldn't be for anything but this specific hardware here. Right. How much does it cost? Uh, 4,000 pounds. And then I know it's 498 for the year for the license. Cool. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay. So that was a nice tour of all the, yeah. the stuff that you have. Yeah. happy with what you've seen? Yeah, and there's much more coming. Uh, yeah, we're always, uh, one thing to say is like, if you're using our tools, please always feedback. We do look at that. That's uh, what's given, uh, made us build some of these new features is because we know people ask for them and we build for them. Does Google have a, a support staff for the teachers and stuff like that? Uh, for teach, yeah, I mean, we, yeah we, have, we have support have for like all like our products, yes. Or they yeah, know we, how have, to do something, or? we have support, yes, we do. All right. Cool, and yeah. there's also this admin system. The uh, admin console, yeah. Uh, the or, console is only available for uh, uh, license fee for the schools to buy, right? This kind of like, and, and they all use uh, no, 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 no. So if a school wants to use G Suite for education, and if they want to be able to manage, uh, sorry, 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 schools can sign up to G Suite for education for free. They can use it for free. Um, if you buy Chromebooks, we have a license fee. A one-off license fee per Chromebook is £19, um, and that means that that Chromebook can be centrally managed from one admin console. Nice. So it's just £19 one-time fee? One-time fee per device, yes. And that means they can use uh, forever, they can be managed? Yep. As long as that Chromebook is alive, it can be managed. All right. Cool. Yeah.